it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making well a thing <laughs> what started out as a sunflower themed pan saver while I was making it I came up with so many other uses so yes you could make it in this size and put it in between your pans to stop them from scratching and making a noise in my cupboard but you could also make a smaller one here for a coaster so to put your glass on but also you could make this one bigger so do more rounds of the center of your sunflower and turn it into a placemat for a plate of course but also in this size it could serve for putting a vase on top in the middle of your table for instance and then here I've got the one that I'm making in the video. So in between everything else, you will be shown all the possibilities for all the things that I'm making. But this one here is actually doubled up and actually it's triple. So this one is a medium sized sunflower. Actually, there's two. And in between, there's another layer. So this one, yes, could be used as your flower vase stand it could be used for putting your hot bowl of porridge on in the morning it could be used for saving those pots from scratching each other but also it is thick enough to actually serve as a hot pot stand for your hot pots in the kitchen and I tried it out and I have to say it worked brilliantly now the only reason you can do this put a hot surface on top of this is because this is cotton okay so make sure you do not use acrylic if you are going to use it for a hot pot stand you can use acrylic for all the other uses that I've come up with but not when you're going to use heat on it and of course it's all washable okay let's get started so for this project I used King Cole Cotton Soft it's a hundred percent cotton and it's a DK weight so a nice thickness to work with now I used it in the colors white buttercup fudge honey and antique gold because I started making all kinds of things with it and I just felt these colours did the sunflower theme justice. I also use my three and a half even though it is a DK yarn I always use a three and a half. Of course you will need scissors and a darning needle just to you know sew in those pesky ends. So let's get started with the center of our sunflower. So I'm going to make a magic circle. So make a cross over your fingers like this. Go under this strand here. Bring back the back strand towards the front. Twist it to go back to that back strand and do a chain. Then take your fingers out and you're going to do another chain. There we go. So now we have a chain two. And now we are going to place nine double crochets into our magic circle. So making sure that you're working over the bit where there are two strands. So here you're going to be placing your double crochets on there. And we are doing nine of them. Now for my last one, there we go. So that's nine double crochets. Then you are going to close your magic circle and you insert your hook. So you skip the two chains and you insert your hook under the ninth V and we do a slip stitch. There we go. So this is the center for our sunflower. And now this is round two. We are going to start with two chains. And then you do two double crochets in each stitch. I will see you at the end of the round. 
So when you get to the end of the round, you are going to place another double crochet into that location where the chain two is coming out of, and then we slip stitch into the next V. There we go. So that closes the round. Then for round three, we are going to chain two, and we've gone from 10 stitches to 20 stitches. Now we are doing 30 stitches. So this time we are going to place one stitch in the first stitch and two stitches in the next. One stitch in the first stitch, two in the next. And this is how you are going to continue. I will see you at the end of the round. Working my double crochet in with that chain. Skipping the chain, going under the V there. Voila. That is round three done. So now, same thing for round four, except this time we are adding another stitch to our stitch count. So one in the first stitch, one in the next stitch, two in the next stitch. So disregarding the chain two, this gives us one, two, three, four stitches that we will be repeating all along the round and three and four go together. So one, one, and here we place two stitches in the same stitch. So this is how you are going to continue for the rest of the round. So I have made it to the end of my round, doing my last stitch, slip stitch and close the round. So this was round one, two, three, four, and I have 40 stitches. So now for round five, chain two, disregard one stitch in the first stitch, one stitch in the second stitch one stitch in the third stitch. Now we're going to place two stitches in the next stitch, one and two. So this is our repeat of five stitches, one, two, three, four, five. Five goes in with the previous one. And this is how you are going to continue all along your round. Just doing my last stitch, skip, under, slip stitch and close the round. There we go. So this is round five done and I have 50 stitches. So now let's do our last round. So now we are going to do six rounds for our pan saver. But if you wanted to make a coaster or a table mat, you can make it smaller or bigger. But you have to remember, you need a multiple of three. So for instance, 30 or 60 or 90 stitches will be perfect. So let's get started on our sixth row. So we yarn over ready for our first stitch here. So in the first stitch, we place one stitch. In the second stitch, we place one stitch. In the third stitch, we place one stitch. In the fourth stitch, we place one stitch. So that's four stitches. And then, of course, in the next stitch, you are going to be placing your increase stitches. So that means two double crochets. And this gives us a repeat of one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. And this is how you will continue for this round. I will see you at the end of the round. Four and then my fifth one in here and six is there so under the V and a slip stitch there we go so this is my center of my sunflower finished and of course you're going to have to make two of them now if you want extra padding you're going to have to make three of them so you can put one in between so make your centers as many or as big as you want. 
So now that I have my circle with my 60 stitches, I am going to make my slip knot in a really pretty yellow that I have here. It's the uh, Cotton Soft King Cole Anti Gold. Oh my goodness, I love that yellow. And I'm going to get started with a standing double crochet. So you yarn over, you go under any stitch, you pull up a loop and you perform your double crochet. There we go. So I'm going to do two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets into the same stitch. Now you're going to skip two into the third for the same thing. Two double crochets, a chain and two double crochets. And this is how you are going to continue your round. Just placing my last two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets in their last location. This will give me two stitches left over and of course then we have our first cluster. So then we go over to this here. This is where we did that standing double crochet which closes up for me. So we go under the next V and we do a slip stitch. Then I'm going to do one slip stitch into the chain space. So I'm in the correct location to start my next round. I'm going to do chain two. So I'm going to do the same thing as the previous round. Two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets. So into the next chain space, two double crochets, one chain and two double crochets. Just done my last shell here and yes, these two rows are the same configuration. So here, skipping the chain two, going under the V to do my slip stitch. So now we slip stitch into the chain space. Then you do a chain two. And this time we are going to change up the stitches. So you do two double crochets with the chain two. So that means we are going to be doing three double crochets now. So this is our first part, then you do a chain and then you do three double crochets. So this time our little shell is made up of three double crochets, a chain and three double crochets. One, two, and three, chain one, one, two, and three. So I will see you at the end of the round. So just finishing the round, skipping here the chain, going under this V here and doing a slip stitch. Then I do another slip stitch to take myself to the middle of the stitch and another one to take myself into the chain space. There I am going to get started with two chains and now I'm going to place another five double crochets into the chain space. So in total we are going to be placing six double crochets into each chain space. So let me continue with this one. One, two, three, four and five. So we will finish this one when we get there. So now we are going to go around here and we place a single crochet. Then you work into the next chain space with six double crochets. Two, three, four, five and six, then we place a single crochet in between those two double crochets here. Then into the next chain space, 
for your six double crochets. And there we go. I will meet you here. So I've just done my last shell of six double crochets. Then I do my single crochet here. Looking at the first shell we did, two chains to be skipped, going under the next V and slip stitching to close the round. So there we go. So this is the end of my design here. So we are now going to have to make another one of these. So I have made two sunflowers and an extra middle. So if you are wanting to use this just for a pot saver, then you don't necessarily need to put a third layer in. But I would recommend if you're going to um, use this as a hot pot for putting your hot cooking pots on, then you will need an extra layer. And you can use this because it's cotton. So we have this one, which we're going to turn around. Then you're going to be placing this one in there, but we are going to get started with doing the petals. So this one can go out for a moment or two. And then we're going to put these ones together. So I'm going to be using exactly the same color so you can't see how I've joined them. So I'm going to get started here, for instance. So I'm going to pick up this V here. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to pick up the corresponding V. There we go. Then you bring through the yarn. So you have a loop. And then you go under the next V here and then also under the next V there. You bring the loop through those stitches and you do a slip stitch. Under here, under the next one and you slip stitch. Make sure you do not do them too tightly. Keep the yarn flowing loosely. So you're going to do this until you are about three quarters of the way round. I will see you then. So I have now made it three quarters of the way around. I have pulled up my loop and I'm just going to leave it there. It would be thick enough if you wanted to use it as a pot saver, but if you really want it to take the heat, then you could put an extra layer in. So this is our third center that I am going to put in. And I'm just going to try and position it so it's sort of at the same level as our other centers. There we go. And doing it this way, it doesn't shift all about, so we know that we are in the right place. And what you're going to do now is push through your hook in between two stitches. Push it through and make sure you come out on the other side in between two stitches, of course, as well. There we go. Wherever you go through that center one, doesn't matter because nobody's going to see that. So you're going to pull through the yarn. And now, holding on to the end, we are ready to start slip stitching. So each time, you have got to make sure you are in between two stitches on the other side as well. So here I'm in the wrong place, as you can see. So just go out again, come back. Yeah. And that's a better location there in between two stitches. Again, make sure you don't do it too tightly so it doesn't scrunch up. There we go. That's going well. Um, yeah, in between those two stitches. So each time you have to go and see to make sure you're in the right location. And of course, you're going through that third one as well, but wherever you go through that, that's fine. I will see you when you have done your whole inner center with your slip stitches. So when you've made it all the way around, there we 
go you cut off your yarn and then this last one you have to do it by sewing in so we will do that and make sure that this first one here doesn't come undone so again sew that in as well and then of course you continue finishing joining your petals and I thought that was a great way of doing it because when I tried with just the centers and not having the petals attached yet it all shifted too much but this way was sort of the middle way it made it easy for my center to just stay where it had to stay but of course a half of my flower or more than half of my flower was already attached and that helped enormously and as you can see most of my ends are simply disappearing into my pad I will see you at the end I've just made it all the way around and that is it so all I have to do is sew in the ends of the joining slip stitch rows so I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial so many things you can do with this here we have three rounds and then here I did the two double crochet one chain and two double crochet and then straight away I did the shell row with the six double crochets so this could serve as a coaster this one here could serve as a pot saver and then this one here could serve as a pot saver but also as a hot pad for your hot cooking dishes it is possible of course to use this because this is a hundred percent cotton do not do this with acrylic so i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial thank you very much for watching and i look forward to seeing your makes bye <music>